So the recording Hello. is on, and there's Jacinta. Um, Hi, Jacinta. How are you? How's summer? I'm, it's good. I'm going to keep my video camera off, but I'll be here. Okay. How are you? We're hot here. I don't know where you are. Right. But here it's hot. Have to stop for all of us in Amherst, it's too hot. <laughs> Oh my Imagine God. moving north, this far north, and saying we're too hot. Oh, <laughs> it's funny. So I'm waiting, waiting for his one already. Right. So I did just send her an email. Um, if you you might want to uh, text her and just make her aware that she is able to join. If you have a phone number for her, I usually do email. I can share. Right. Um, I see her in the um, attendee, so I am going to promote her to a panelist, so she should be joining us. Great. Okay. Hello. Hello. I'm looking very sweaty. <laughs> we oh, that's all yeah. right. Yeah. It's a sauna effect, <laughs> glowing complexions. Exactly. <laughs> it's the spa meeting. Yeah, right. spa. Right. <laughs> We're very grateful. <laughs> so it's 6.05, Ronnie, if you want to read the mm -hmm. start. It's 6.05. We're starting the meeting of the Human Rights Commission, Tuesday, June 18th. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. So welcome everyone. Um, we do have a quorum, so let's get started. Um, the first agenda item, oh, I guess I should take attendance first. Um, Liz Haygood. We know she's there. Here. Thank you. I unmute you for a second. Joy Eiffel, not present. Rizwana Khan? Present. Deborah? Present. Uh, Rani, that's me, present. Jacinta? Present. And Tyler, I guess his term is finished. Okay. All right, so everyone is here. Um, are there any announcements to be made? Yeah, I, I can do one announcement. Basically, I was at the um, farmer's market and I met Muhammad Gafti or something. He was in charge of Amnesty International and he wanted to come in the audience and uh, talk about some kind of a resolution he wanted to make, but I don't know whether he's in the audience or not. But uh, next time I'll make sure he's in the loop because I did tell him that we are having the meeting. So he was very keen to participate in it. Oh, I have an announcement also. Um, <clears throat> at the last meeting, um, I said I would reach out to the Sunrise organization to see if they might have somebody who would be interested in becoming a member. And it was the same. I happened to see the gentleman who is at one of the forums on the resident oversight board. Um, 
at the DONA, the District 1 meeting. So I approached him there and I gave him my card and I said, I'd love to be in touch. Can we chat? And um, during the meeting, and he said, oh, yeah, 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 sure. And then during the meeting, he said, go to our website and, you know, you can reach me there. Well, there's there's no staff identified. There's no volunteers identified. There's no email identified. There's no phone number identified on the website. <laughs> it's just kind of a description. It's like a national website and then a description of what's happening in Amherst. So I got thwarted. And I just want to say I tried. But if anyone else has a contact, actual contact information, I'm happy to do the outreach if you can send that to me. Liz, yeah, I would think you would be the person, right? For the what? Sunrise group, to have a contact in, at Sunrise to see if they're interested in joining the commission. I mean, I could ask. Oh, yeah, Liz will know. Yeah. True. Yeah. yeah. Seems to me you would be the person. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Liz. I had, um, I've been sending, putting the word out, asking about this, and uh, one person had quite a long phone conversation with me, so I'm hoping that he at least is going to apply, but we should all be finding candidates because we're very close to a quorum at this point, and if somebody cannot come, it will be very difficult next time because this is Roswana's last month. So I'm going to interject for a, um, a second and just remind that the announcement from the League of Women Voters mm -hmm. is needs yes. to be um, made during the uh, member announcements because we did not um, uh, add it to the agenda. And, um, and then I'll just also just clarify that generally, um, although a term would normally end at the end of June, um, it's been the practice of the of the town that a member can stay active on the commission until someone else is reappointed. So, um, so uh, Rizwana may be able to extend her membership past, you know, June oh. into July or August. Like you don't automatically have to leave at That's on so June thirtieth. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Just let me know because I'm already now in. Uh, ZBA, I have, I got into that committee also, and I am waiting for financial committee to tell me. Over here, the Hi, Phoenix, she's back there. I, I'm going to stay out here for the meeting. All right. Uh, I will definitely okay. let you know. And um, Liz, I don't know if you're aware, but you are unmuted. I know. That's why I'm moving over here, where the kids are not. I'm out of graduate. I'm moving on ceremony. Can you can you hear them in the background, or should I move further? No, we hear you fine. That's what's important. Thank okay. you. Can you hear the kids? Because if you can hear the kids, no, we don't hear the kids. Oh yeah, no. I'm gonna move. Yeah, they're fine. Huh? We cannot hear the kids. You're you're. Yeah, we we, but we yeah. can hear you clearly. Okay, so um. We have a fairly brief agenda today with um, only one thing to talk about. Um, so let's open with public comments then. Um, during the public comment period, sure. should I read this since there's no public in the- I don't see any public in the, in the cat. Yeah, so let's yeah. skip the public comments and go to member reports, please. <laughs> Anybody with reports? Uh, the only report that I have is that there's some controversy for the CSSJ too, that mm -hmm. Deborah Ferreira is not being appointed, reappointed in as her um, position on the um, committee. And um, I know there's been a public outcry about that. So just to let people know if they have an opinion about that, they can contact uh, Mr. Balkerman, um and talk to him about his reasonings for not reappointing her and or getting behind her being reappointed if you so desire. I actually had a motion to make about that, but I guess we'll do that in our discussion items. I'm not sure where that is going to be. Um, any other reports? So I guess the only report I had was the League of Women Voters event. 
Um, it's the Racial Justice and Equity Committee. Um, they're hosting the Crest Director and the new police chief in our reception. So that's on June 30th at New okay. River. I do believe I got to remember the time. Pamela, help me. You think it's 2 30? I want, I thought it was early. Yeah, from 2 30 to 4 30. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so let's go to the action and discussion items. We have four. The HRC bylaw, we are finished with it. I think Pamela was going to give us an update on what happens next. Right. So the next step for the HRC bylaw will be that it, um, uh, it needs to be placed on the agenda for the town council. And it's my understanding. I don't know when that will occur, but it's my understanding that they will have an opportunity to, to read both the bylaw as the commission would like it to read, as well as the bylaw um, as the town manager uh, has suggested that it read. And they will, will then have to make a decision based on those two documents. So I can, um, I haven't checked with Athena to know, to, um, to just, to learn of the date for that bylaw amendment. I know generally she would probably want to do the annual report and the bylaw together. So, um, so we might think about a target date, um, and either July or early August for both of those issues to be addressed by the town council. Could we see a copy of the town manager's version of the bylaws? Mm -hmm. I didn't realize there would be two versions they'd be looking at. So it would be right. good for us to be able to see, have both versions to look at as well. Right. You you do already have both versions. That was the version that was presented, but I can resend it out. But you, that was the version um, that was presented to you and discussed when um, by KP Law, and that prompted the discussion about adding back the language about no power going unchecked. So that that version was was the version of the town manager. Yeah, it would be good to have both versions in one place so everyone can look at it because the. Town council meeting is several weeks away and we're going to be doing other things. So it would be good to have both accessible easily, if possible, just the final versions because we discussed it for so long and there are so many versions of everything. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to do that. Thanks. So then it's the DEI and press report. Right. Um, and I... Uh, so I don't have much to report on the Crest side of things. Um, uh, the Crest Department has reapplied for the GPL. The GPL is the government performance lab that they've been participating in through Harvard. So normally that non-fiscal grant lasts a year. Um, and uh, We've known all along that we would want to reapply because the new director obviously hasn't had very much opportunity to work with Harvard. Um, um, and so that grant application was completed and submitted today. Today was the deadline to have that done. Um, so that's probably the biggest thing that they've, uh, since the last time that you've met, since you met Camille. And in addition to that, she mentioned a number of different um, community engagements that she's been involved with. So Crest responders are manning the cooling station and the bang center. Um, they are planning on doing outreach or community engagement or community outreach to Puffer's Pond and some other locations in town. Um, and they will be also hosting a racial equity um, training. That's a requirement of the Department of Public Health grant that they have. Um, I think you all each or should have each all received an invitation to participate in that two-day um, racial equity training. Um, 
there are still some slots available. So if you uh, know members of the community who might be interested in participating, they could contact a uh, Kat Newman in the Crest Department, and she would you know, be happy to to add them. Um, and so those are really, I think, the three top things to report from from Cress. On the DEI side, I am breathing <laughs> after having like essentially, uh, well, six events between May second and um, and June fifteenth, um, uh, and, and that includes some DEI workshops for staff. The final staff workshop. For this fiscal year will take place on Friday. The topic is going to be white fragility. So we're gonna do um, you know, hot topics during the hot weather. And um the I would say of the major cultural events, um, including uh, AAPI, the Mill River basketball tournament, um, the Youth Hero Awards and um, Race Amity Day, uh, Juneteenth, and the Pride event. I feel like I'm missing something. Um, most went well, probably. Um, you know, there's room for improvement in all of them, especially the Juneteenth event. There was very little turnout for that event. Um, very few folks showed up, which is a bit disappointing, but there was also a full day of programming that was occurring at the same time by Ancestral Bridges. And then there's another day of programming for Juneteenth um, that's scheduled on the actual day by the Black Business Association of the Amherst area. Um, so um, the Pride event, I think was a lovely event and um, uh, a, I, I won't say well attended, it would have been wonderful to have more folks there, but very meaningful for those folks who were there. Just um, um, very moving, very touching stories of the three panelists and their personal experiences of being married uh, here in Amherst. Um, and then Justice Roderick um, Ireland, who was at the time an associate justice of the Supreme Judicial Court, later um, chief justice of the Supreme Judicial Court, spoke about his decision to be a part of the majority that granted marriage equality um, and also his uh, decision to be the sole dissent in a case um, related to marriage equality and the ability from folks who lived outside of the Commonwealth to have um, rights to marriage equality in the Commonwealth. So just a wonderful, wonderful evening. I think those, those people who were in attendance um, just felt like it was really meaningful. And I've got, received a couple of emails um, from folks who attended that event. Um, I think, um, as you know, a couple of you were in attendance for AAPI, so that was wonderful um, and well attended. Uh, we had inclement weather for the beginning of the uh, Mill River basketball tournament, so that tournament got moved to the high school, um, but then the weather cleared and uh, the Youth Hero Awards and the Race Amity Day section of the program were held at Mill River. The food was fantastic. So um, I have to thank Marita Banda for uh, recommending that, that our food vendor who was who did it an absolutely excellent job. It, anybody who had that meal left more than satisfied. And there was a good turnout for that, for those events, both at the basketball tournament um, and um, I think um, for the events on site later in the day. So after Friday, I can take a little breath um, and, um, you know, we've sort of survived the thick of it and then we'll start to, again, planning. Um, update, the um, hiring process is proceeding. Um, this has been a very active search. There have been over 25 applicants for the position, which I expected just given the nature of the job and also um, the work that's been done around DEI work in the in and around Amherst, all of the five colleges, as well as there's a social justice education program at UMass Amherst. So that draws a lot of attention to this type of work. Um, I'm hopeful that within the next uh, 
week or two, we, that process will, you know, will come to some sort of uh, conclusion, but it's proceeding on, on course. And I think that's all I have for, for DEI. Do you have an idea, more specific idea of when that process is coming to an end? What's your hope for when the person would start? So I would love um, to have someone starting um, in late July. Mm -hmm. I think that's the earliest that we could anticipate, you know, that nothing will happen before then, so. Thank you. So uh, moving on to the next agenda item, um, this is Deb's proposal that we've discussed many times. Um, Take it away. Yeah, I would love for the, com the commission to move to a place of decision on this. And what I realized might be helpful is that um, I had a three-pronged plan or suggestion. The first uh, part of the plan was to train the community uh, to support uh, increased accountability um, amongst community members voluntarily, you know, just because there was awareness was raised and also increase accountability amongst uh, municipal electeds and employees with a, um, just by taking a look at personnel uh, systems to see how they could better support human rights uh, goals. So that was the first agenda. The second agenda was to do a community-based um, data collection instrument to, to see what people's experiences were so that they could just anonymously or really quickly just file a complaint and not have to pursue anything just to let us know something was happening. So we could ascertain whether there were um, <clears throat> repeat offenders or there were patterns. And then the third was to hold folks accountable. And there could be any number of ways of doing that. The suggestions that were here were just options. And I realized, well, maybe it would be easier if this were put into three bites. So like year one, create a video webinar for business owners and municipal leaders and school leaders. Um, and then year two, do the data collection instrument. And year three, figure out um, if there are ways that we could um, take action to ensure that if folks are not quite getting it right, uh, that they, they we could create the most hospitable environment possible. So. The content hasn't changed for those three sections. I just divided it up into year one, year two, and year three. And I hope everybody has read it because you've seen um, a version of it. Uh, this is the third time. And what I often do these days is just say, let's take a few minutes for everybody to read it. Um, Liz, if you're driving, you are not allowed to do that, obviously. <laughs> but for other folks on the call, if it would be helpful to just take a few minutes to read read it through. Um, and Pamela did send it out to all of us with the invitation to the meeting. Um, I'm wondering if that would be a good idea. But I'm, Ronnie, your call, you're chairing the meeting. What do you think? I think it's good to take a quick look, to allow a minute to take a quick look just in case somebody did not see it. And it's pretty short and bulleted. So uh, if you're familiar with the topic, you have an idea. And um, I also just made your co-host, if, if you want to share screen mm. um, of the three bullet points. Happy to do that. Thank you. Um... So this is the first page. Um, is that, do you see it? Building a culture of welcome, justice, et cetera. All right. Um, the problem is that there's two pages worth, so I can't show the whole thing. Um, but I'll give you a sense.
So um, I don't know if I should move forward, but I think what I'd like to urge is that if there are any questions, please ask them. But it, what, before we move to um, making a decision, I, I'd like people to not get caught up in the options for holding people accountable because that part of the plan wouldn't, those are all just suggestions and that part of the plan wouldn't be implemented for two years. So um, really it's the first two years that we're looking at for how we might move forward. And in case this is a question, somebody might ask, well, how is a community database different than the opportunity people already have to file a complaint? And the answer is when people file a complaint now, they're expecting a response um, and they get to engage with our DEI office. And for this data collection instrument, it's just a reporting tool to actually get a sense that something's happening. If somebody wants it to go to the DEI office for action to be taken, then on the form, they could say that. But they also have the option of just saying, oh, you know, I went to the store and this is what happened. Just wanted you to know. So it serves a broader purpose. All right, can I take it off screen so I can see everybody and have a, all right. Great. <clears throat> so happy to take questions. I really, I don't have a question, but I really, really like this plan because I know for me, often there are incidents and I can tell you one very quickly in a jewelry store where I go in with my husband to buy expensive jewelry and the salesperson goes right up to him and he says, oh, my wife is making a purchase, points to me. But the person persists in approaching him, even though he just wants to see what I choose to buy, but I'm the buyer. Until I finally say, you know, I'm not spending my money here. I'm walking out the door. Mm -hmm. um, and I can tell you, that's just recent, but I can tell you how many more such things happen. And I think that I'm not looking for somebody to come and resolve this for me. But I certainly would like it written down somewhere so we can see how much of it there is and what can be done on a larger scale about it. I really like this because I think it touches on people's everyday microaggressions and whatnot <laughs> and helps us as a community to understand um, what's going on in this regard. So I support it very strongly. Thank you. And I just realized, were we supposed to first make, um, uh, have somebody make uh, a motion? A motion, right. I was, going to, I was going to wait for the discussion to be over. That's why I didn't make a motion and questions to be answered. Rizwana? Yeah. Actually, it was a, it's a wonderful uh, blueprint of how things should be, you know, but as like every other blueprint, if we do not have HR and their agreement, obviously we are going to look for that also. And uh, Pam, uh, Pamela, you will be the one, you know, telling us more about whether we have the resources for that and the, whether Cress will be involved in it also, because this is, I can I, I can see the vision. I, I know this is very important. And uh, where the people are the resources there, especially who are in the, in the um, uh, town hall, those people, HR and all that. So that is something, uh, because if the system, you have created it, that's how it should have been, you know, the fact that the businesses and the webinar and the school district, they should have this thing. But who is going to take charge of this? Because there is some uh, accountability involved in it also. Yeah. Two things. I just want to say that the, the video actually really does need resources because you mm -hmm. need to, to make the video and edit it and, and you know, write the script. Um, the database takes almost nothing. With Google surveys, you know, if you just take a like quarterly accounting, you just download whatever the um, responses have been. And I really don't think there's going to be, you know, thousands or hundreds. There might be, you know, dozens in a year. So I've done used Google um, surveys before, and I really just don't think that that's resource heavy. And it could even be like, as long as I'm on the commission, I would be happy to staff that as a volunteer. Oh. But the first, okay. piece, the first piece, absolutely, you're right, does require resources. And my answer to that is we would make a budget request. Okay. Thank you. So, 
Go ahead, Liz. I'm trying to figure out how this interfaces with our bylaws. And if it does interface with our bylaws, my position would be to wait for our bylaws to be approved or not before we can then implement this or at least vote on it. If it doesn't interface with our bylaws, that's a whole different conversation. But I'm looking at it thinking this has to do a lot with what we can do as a commission. And if our bylaws don't support this, regardless, depending on what is approved or not, then we're wasting time trying to vote on something that we may not be able to do anyway. So if I can address that question, because I think one of the beauties of this is that it is exactly in both versions of the bylaws that are going to the town council. The town manager, I remember just from our conversation with the lawyer, Liz, was very keen to have that education component about human rights. But our really bylaws that, have not been approved yet. Right. But I'm saying that whether it's in, it's in all versions of the bylaws being cons cons considered, but you're right. I don't, I'm not questioning that. I'm just saying it's there. Nobody's saying it's not needed. I'm just speaking so forthrightly because this really does speak to, I think, my own mind as well, as you can see. I think education about human rights is really, really important in this town. Um, my read of the bylaws as a lawyer is that there's nothing in either version that would preclude this. And the real question is, does it comport with the mission as articulated in both? And the answer is absolutely yes. I mean, it, it's not the only way to comport with it, but it, yeah. So I'm, I think you're absolutely right. It has to be read through the lens of the bylaws, um, but I'm not sure it needs to wait. Or we could make a decision that says, I don't know, I mean, pending approval of the new bylaws, you know, this will move forward, but um, yeah. If you had a specific concern <laughs> about either the existing bylaws or the proposed bylaws and where there'd be a conflict, I would very much like to hear that because certainly um, I agree with you, it should not conflict. Are there any other questions or comments? So shall I make a motion? I move to accept this proposal as part of our work plan for the next year. Do I have a second? I second it. Thank you. Okay, so I'm calling for the vote. Ms. Haygood? She's muted, so I'll come back to her. Rizwana? Yes. Uh, Deborah? Yes. Ronnie? Yes. Jacinta? We know you're there, Jacinta. Need your vote. Hi, sorry, my phone. I have to, it's so confusing, but yes. Okay, thank you. And then back to so Liz. I did not hear the motion because I went to throw my trash away and I had a bunch of screaming 13 year olds. So I need to rehear the motion so that I can make the decision. The motion was to accept Deborah's proposal as part of our work plan for the next year. Uh, did we put anything in there as far as um, as it as it coincides with our bylaws? Because I, um, I didn't say that. Um, right, I didn't I mention the bylaws. Well, somebody has to help me procedurally here. I don't mind reposing the motion, but we've the others. Well, you don't have to. If everybody said yes, and I, I'm the only one to say no, it, it passes. 
It was just that my vote is no because that's part of that I wanted to be in there. That's all. There's no you don't have okay. to change anything. Okay. All right. So we have a majority vote in support. The motion is passed. Um moving on to the next agenda item. It is discussion of the HRC event. Um I'm not 100% sure what this was about, but I think there's been discussion about how we're doing a lot of events and how to keep their value. In other words, we don't want to stop doing the events. Is this what this was? Can I ask Pamela? Discussion of events. Is this so what it I, was that we have was, a lot of? Go ahead. Yeah. So I was asked to put this on the, on the agenda item and I I thought that um that you and perhaps uh, Rabbi Deb had had a conversation about um uh thinking about a, a different method of um, of holding events so it's I, just I think this was at the AAPI meeting where celebration where we had a lot of people but they were all performances pretty much um it sort of saddened me actually because it represents such a big geographic part of the world and we have this important ethnic group and all these people came forward with so many skills and just to show off themselves and their culture but they were really talking to each other and it sort of made me wonder if maybe we are having we need to reorganize them if we're having so many events that if we could put them so that there's more opportunity for people to learn about each other and to share with other people, not themselves. And one of the thoughts, and I'm not stuck to this, one of the thoughts was what if we reorganize them differently so we would have multiple groups at the same time but have fewer, like one every three months, and then you have six big groups. And they not only get to show off who they are, but they get to interact with another community group. Um, so that's what prompted this, and I'm opening the floor for discussion. The only um, thing that I would say about that is there were certain um, things that have to happen at certain times of the year. So if those in, uh, so there's there's the big ones for me: um, Kwanzaa, MLK, Juneteenth, um, AAPI Pride, and I'm thinking of one more Latinx Heritage Month. So those I would want to keep, but there's also a whole bunch of other smaller um, groups that um, would happen within the month. And I got to think of what those are because it, I have the list at home. But if we could have, say, January is these five groups, then of course I would think, hey, Instead of celebrating just the one, MLK, let's celebrate MLK along with, and if we could use like the base community center and maybe use the second floor for this and the big large group room for this and downstairs for that, then it would be great because people then can um, be a part. We can stagger them, have pre different presentations. I think it's a wonderful idea. And um you know, people could come learn about MLK and then come learn about this group and then come. And so it would be like, cool, that you're, you're there with so many different um, groups that represent our town and have them feel important because um, some of them we do all the time and I, I wouldn't want to not do some of the ones that I'm familiar with and for the reasons of, um, like somebody asked me about something, why do we do MLK? Why do we do Kwanzaa? Why do, I said, well, because we were brought here. We weren't, you know, I think we have to acknowledge the African-American community because it wasn't our choice to be in this land, but we are here now. However, some folks choose to be here. And um, so that's why I wouldn't want to let go of some of the African-American heritage celebrations. However, I also want to know and learn about and be aware of and support our other groups that have come here. So I think that would be fabulous if we could figure out 
way ahead of time. Okay, these three groups we're going to do in November. And yeah, let's start planning now. That's all. I love the idea. Sorry. I love the idea of um, combining and expanding so that we're not just preaching to our own choirs. Um, and we have some cross fertilization. And um, I don't know how to handle the fact that there are. I'd love to know, Pamela, how many events are actually on the roster? Because um, it seems like there are sometimes between six and 10 a month. And Amherst has two people in the DEI office, and that's just not tenable. So everyone's going to be attached to some of those, right? So the, something needs to give somewhere. I love the quarterly model, <clears throat> and I'm wondering, yeah, I don't know how to how to handle the fact that uh, some things will drop off uh, or will be combined. I don't know how to do that, how to handle that. <clears throat> so Jennifer and I, during the first year, had um, proposed a list of events, and um, they were. It's it feels like there are six a month, but it's really le a far fewer than that. It's a generally probably like maybe six to eight major events during the year. Um, and some years there might be more or less. For example, the Pride celebration celebration that we did this year was added because it was the 20th anniversary of the Goodrich decision. That would come off, you know, next year. There wouldn't be um, the town would continue on with its proclamation that they would normally do, but we wouldn't try to have a bi a big celebratory event. And so I I think that there are a couple of different ways to think about this issue. Um, uh, one would be to look um, at the events and do a rotating schedule so that, you know, this year it's these six, next year it's the next six. So there's not an expectation that every group would be honored every year, or you could decide to do things thematically. You know, we're going to look at, um, uh, um, uh, I, I thought like, maybe you would might look at race amity day as a day in which to have uh, a number of different cultural uh, celebrations because the day the purpose of race amity day is to bring different um races and cultures together and so choose that day and have one major uh cultural celebration that invites all the groups in i think there's lots of different ways to think about it um and it would really be a decision of this group, like how, how you want it to go about. One um, suggestion uh, that I have, and I'll, I'll have to find this article and send it, but there is a researcher, Enid Lee, who now more than 20 years ago, probably more than 30 years ago, wrote um, a piece that says, looking beyond heroes and holidays to thinking about what and what ways can you honor cultures that actually move the work forward so that um, you're actually uh, celebrating, but celebrating in a way in which you can have um, have some action take place. So I, you know, again, I think there's multiple ways to think about it. And um, I'm happy, I'll make a note to you to send the last uh, full list that we did. And I, I will say that the list um, included events that um, have primarily been the responsibility of the Human Rights Commission, and it also included DEI events um, that we're, because for for the department, these events are both our responsibility. So we did a full list because we needed to look at our full workload, but I'm, I'm happy to send you what that lo list looked like for uh, uh, 2023, 2024, to give you a sense of the of the type of work. And some things did not happen. For example, I know that Ronnie really wanted us to um, to conduct an event for Women's History Month, and it didn't happen this year, right? So that's an example of something that's really important for us to highlight. But um, just because of the 
responsibilities of the office and my limited availability to provide support, that's one that felt fell off. So, yeah. Yep. That's really helpful, Pamela. Thank you. Um, some thoughts are bubbling and I don't think we need to make a decision here, but um, one thought I had was we could have one quarterly event that was a celebration of religious diversity. So there would be, you know, Hindu and Jewish and Muslim and Sikh and um, <clears throat> Native American um, participants and happy to have an atheist participant too. Uh, did I mention Buddhist and Taoist? I mean, you know, just everything, right? Um, for one quarterly event. And then, you know, thinking about what Liz just said about how Afri the predominant African-American experiences of having been forcibly brought here, it, there might be, it might be nice to have um, an immigrant and refugee um, gathering, not just for people who are first generation here in the United States, but lots of communities um, didn't necessarily, weren't necessarily forcibly brought here, but were fleeing, you know, um, heinous conditions. And that's something that might, uh, I don't know, that might be interesting as a point of uh, connectivity. Are there uh, other comments, Jacinta and Rizwana? Yeah, I totally agree with Deborah because of the fact. Huh? Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I agree with that because there should be a representation uh, and interfaith, um, some kind of, um, you know, festivities uh, that include them also. Mm, that, that is something we should look into seriously. Thank you, uh, Deborah. And then Jacinta, did you have a comment about this? Um, I think it sounds it sounds like we have to really think about it. Um, I the one thought I had during the conversation was how a lot of months, um, like one heritage month will lead to another, kind mm -hmm. of like I'm um thinking about like September November, um like Hispanic Heritage Month kind of leads into Indigenous. Heritage Month. Um, so maybe that approach too with the quarterly events, we could think about that or having um, finding ways to highlight specific groups within specific months, but also taking that workload off of us. I'm in support of that or taking the workload off the office um, and yeah, just dividing it up so that we could make things really worthwhile and great, rich experiences. So, yes. Yeah. I think that you should you. start planning this at the retreat and have take uh, some time at the retreat to bring everything together and decide what you're going to do and what the, the plans are for each celebration so that they can start earlier rather than later. We tend to come up on things before, right, right before they're going to happen and say, oh my God, we have to do this. And that's what creates um, it not being well attended because people don't know about it. So if we can, you know, plan stuff at the retreat and then have everything all, um, here's the date that we're going to send this out to this person or this group and who's going to contact the newspapers and, you know, just have a spreadsheet of all of that so that it's not last minute. Because I think that sometimes in all of our busy lives, and it has nothing, it's, you know, it's not a fault of anybody, but we ended up saying, oh my God, we were supposed to do this, and we now it's too late to get to it. So if we can put it on our calendars for the retreat, and then each month have checkpoints so that these things can um, continue to happen and be productive for everybody. Thank you. So I can think I definitely, sorry. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna interject for a second because um I'm wondering if the if the plan is to real is to focus, I think, on this topic for the retreat. The retreat has normally happened in like September or October, whether we might consider an earlier retreat um in August prior to the start of the of the you know sort of cultural events or there's mm -hmm. the, so in July, what would normally um, happen would be a reading of the Frederick Douglass 
um, speak, but the South Congregational Church is going to do that this year. Um, I believe it's the South Congregational Church. And so, yes, yeah, so that, that obviously no need for us to do it if they're going to be doing the reading. Um, there are typically no, nothing that is scheduled for August. So we'd have, um, if you scheduled the retreat for early August, you'd have that at least Jacinta and any new members that we might have. Oh, that's have. right. Or because Jacinta so won't be back. Think yeah. about that. Yeah. Okay. Well, so much for that idea. <laughs> well, I think we definitely, there's nothing stopping us from thinking about this now that we've started discussing it, looking at Pamela's list and coming back to it if we have ideas in the next meeting. Um, and then we'll keep going. Hopefully we can, I don't know, let's, there's no reason to say it's now or whenever it is October. Um, but it certainly looks like there's interest in some kind of change. So let's just give it a little bit more thought, which is what I feel like I need to do anyway. Um, so then not on the agenda is one other, are we done with this discussion, HRC events? Are there any additional comments before we move on? Okay, I'll take that to be a no. Um, I wanted to introduce one more thing, and that is uh, this issue that's been going on with the CSSJC and the appointment of, or uh, non-appointment of Deborah Ferreira. And um, so I would like to make a motion with regard to that. So if somebody needs more explanation about what it is that I'm talking about, can you let, can you speak up? And then I'll just try to give a quick explanation. Yeah, I okay, just public comment, yeah. but Deborah, I'm at Deborah's house, so if you want to talk to her. Yeah. Oh, you're at her house. At oh, house. goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I know she can't. Okay, I well. know she can't. That was just something, you know, you know. <laughs> All right. So I want to, to make a motion about that from the Human Rights Commission, which is that I wanted to make a motion that we support her reappointment to the CSSJC. Second. Third, fourth. Okay. All in favor, say yes. We'll do a thumbs vote on this. Yes. Rizwana, Jacinta. Yes. Okay, then. It is so moved. Yes. So do I need to write something up to present and send to Paul on behalf of the HRC? Sure. How does that Just work? say that we voted unanimously in support of her reappointment to the CSSJC. All right, I'll, I'll write that up and send it to you, Ronnie, for edit and then send it off to Paul. I'll try to get that done tomorrow. Great. Okay. Okay, so we're back to public comment. Sorry? I'm just gonna beg off, but if we're almost done, I'll stay out here. Okay, that's it for our agenda items. If we are if we're back to public comment, and I'm just checking whether there's any public there, and I see no attendees. So I think oh, we can skip bad. that. Sorry? I said that's too bad. Yeah. Well, that's another thing we need to change. We need to get people to come and engage with us, and that will make it easier for them to want to be on the commission or to talk to their friends or others they know about being on the commission. So uh, we'll have to work on that. With that, I am adjourning the meeting. It is 6.58 p.m. Thanks, everyone. You guys, see you all. Okay, see bye you bye. Next month. Good job. Thank bye. you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.